Good afternoon. I'm here with Sheriff Walteri with the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office, and we're here to do two things. One, to update you on the officer-involved shooting, a deputy-involved shooting, and the second one is to release the in-car camera and the body camera of the shooting involved with the deputy. As you know, on Monday, April the 8th, around 6.04 p.m., Deputy Chris Ryan was dispatched to an armed person call at 14037 9th Avenue North. The call note stated that a neighbor was stabbed and he was asking for help. Deputy Ryan arrives on the scene at approximately 6.07 p.m., where he encounters the suspect, Amy Jager, holding a knife in her hand. Radio dispatch also advised the deputy, you can hear in the background saying, she's trying to kick in the door. Deputy Ryan exits his marked cruiser, draws his firearm, and immediately engaged Jager, commanding her to drop the knife. He told her to drop the knife over five times as she was coming toward him. Jager did not comply with his command. She continued to walk toward him. She said several times, no, and four times she said, kill me now. When this encounter occurred, it occurred within 11 seconds of Deputy Ryan exiting his vehicle. So from the time he gets out of his car until the time he fires that shot, it takes 11 seconds for Ms. Jager to come toward the deputy. Once the suspect is on the ground, deputy holds her at gunpoint, and then when his backup arrives, they immediately start to render first aid to the suspect. Then Deputy Ryan makes contact with the victim, Peter Fraser, and he renders aid to him. So what is the backstory of this for the deputy involved shooting? The victim and the suspect were in a relationship for the past year. The victim told the suspect on his date that he no longer wanted to be in his relationship, and that he had canceled their vacation plans. At that point, the suspect then started attacking the victim with a knife. Somehow, the victim was able to escape and run to the neighbor's home east of that house where it occurred. Once he's inside the house, Ms. Yeager then continues to follow him with the knife, and then she tries to start prying the door open. She's successful to the point where she's able to take the trim off the door, and she's reaching inside the house when the owner of the house takes the trim, the wooden trim that she's taken off the door, and hit her on the hand several times. At that point, the uh, Deputy, Ye Deputy Ryan is on the scene, and you'll see that on the video. What I'm going to do is show you three videos. It's very disturbing. The first video is the in-car. The second video is going to be his body cam footage. And then the third video is going to be the body cam and the in-car camera side by side. Ms. Yeager is going to be, still, her condition is still critical. She's being charged with attempt homicide, armed residential burglary, aggravated assault on a law enforcement officer. Her criminal history shows that she was arrested for a DUI. At this time, our investigation reveals that we will not be seeking to file any charges, and I repeat that, any charges against Deputy Ryan for discharging his firearm. So with that, we'll show the first video. This is going to be... <laughs> When the deputy pulls up, she's at the door with the knife trying to gain entry. He makes commands to her, and you'll see that on the dash cam video. And as you can see, she's coming toward him, and as you can see, he's taking steps to back up. Now, on the dash cam, it's going to be a little bit of a wider shot. It's going to look like she's closer, but remember, this street is only where two cars can pass at the same time. So, body cam, please. And then the last 
last video, we're just going to show you side by side so you can see the in-car camera and the dash camera in relationship of what happened. So as you can see, Deputy Ryan did everything possible. He had 11 seconds from the time he exited that car to make a decision. And the, and the suspect, she came to him. And he, as you saw again, he stepped back and kept giving her orders. And she kept continuing to move toward him. So with that, I'll open it for any questions. Chief, did he fire his weapon about 11 times? He, he fired his weapon 11 times. He struck her several times. We, I can't tell you how many times, but he did fire his weapon 11 times. She's still in critical condition. She had surgery today. I think she has another one scheduled for tomorrow. Has anything caused that surgery before fire? No, not to my knowledge, and, and I don't recall even anyone going there, but I can double check that for you before the end of the day. Did the couple have a history of domestic issues at all? Has she had any contact with them before? Or has Again, so the sheriff wouldn't have that information, so it's with us, I have to double check. Uh, what might detect on get that before the end of the day, but I don't remember seeing anything that they've been dispatched on a domestic before there. It could have been, but I'll double check. Chief, what's the condition of the victim, and can you just uh, describe what condition is the chief on this? Sure. So the victim is in stable condition. The large butcher knife that you see here, that's the knife that we assume that she used to stab him with. The knife to the far left would be your right. That's the knife she was using to pry open the door, and she did get it open, take the wood trim off, and that's the same knife she came after the uh, deputy with. These are knives that she took from their home that they were in before she exited the car? Yeah, so the, the first knife you see there to my left, your right, is the one that we assume that she used to stab the victim with, and the right to, the far, to my far left, your far right, is the knife that she used to break into the home and then to come after the deputy with. Well, obviously, it's troubling, uh, and you know, it, it appears that uh, she had some mental health issues uh, and that she was looking for, unfortunately, for the deputy to do what he had to do. So we hate to have to respond to these types of situations in the way that uh, Deputy Ryan had to respond to it here. But what's most important uh, is, is that Deputy Ryan's safe, all the law enforcement officers are safe and that he uh, protected himself under these circumstances. So, I mean, these are tough situations. Uh, they're very difficult to deal with, uh, but he did what he had to do, as Chief Holloway said. And what their investigation is showing is, is that from the time he got out of his car until it was, it was 11 seconds. You know, I mean, think about that and how fast that is and what he had to do. So uh, we're just very thankful uh, for the thorough investigation that's been done by the task force led by Chief Holloway and the St. Pete Police Department. And Deputy Ryan uh, is safe. Um, and it, again, it's just a, it, it's, it's one of those tragic situations that happens. How is Deputy Ryan doing? He's good. You know, I talked to him a little while ago, uh, and under the circumstances, I mean, anytime that anybody has to use deadly force, anytime a law enforcement officer has to use deadly force, of course, it's, it's not anything that any of us ever want to do, but when you do it, you do what you have to do, and his training kicked in, and uh, he took uh, effective action, but of course, it's going to bother you, um, even though when you know you do the right thing. So, but overall, he's doing very well, and we appreciate you asking that. And, uh, you know, he'll uh, take the time he needs, and um, he'll be okay. With the outcome of this investigation now announced, uh, I know that he had been on administrative, um, on, on leave with that on duty. When will he be back? Um, That's going to be up to the sheriff. Yeah. So, so, you know, my position on these things is, is that we leave it pretty much uh, up to the deputy is when they're ready. So um, I would imagine sometime in the next few days uh, we go through a process of evaluation. But, you know, as the chief said, uh, and there, the, the first thing we want to make sure is that uh, what they did is in compliance with the law. Uh, and, you know, the, and the chief has announced uh, what uh, they have found in their investigation. So the, the remaining questions are, uh, how is he doing and, and when he wants to come back. So I, I would imagine uh, within the next few days uh, he'll be back to work. Is your victim still stable? Hospital? The victim? 
Yeah, still say, but hospital to victim, yes, he is. And the suspect, again, she's critical, but going through a couple of surgeries. Can you walk us through what the victim's injuries are? And then same for her, where was she shot? Like I can say, so the suspect numerous times uh, on her body, and then the, the victim, same thing, he was stabbed, I went think, three to four times. Uh, I, and I can exactly tell you, I think once in the neck, once in the shoulder, uh, in those areas. Anything else? All right, thank you very much. Do we have to go to